Guizhong was a god who lived over 3,700 years ago in Liyue, taking the form of a young woman with billowing sleeves. She was a... Wait a minute. I've gone over this before, haven't I? Yes, I've already made a video about Guizhong, but that video went over what we know about her. If you want to know more about her lore, go watch that video, as I'll only be summarizing it here. Anyways, today I'm going more into speculation, and I'll be giving my ideas on why she was killed. Also, if you like this video, consider subscribing. It helps me out a lot and I'd really appreciate it. Anyways, let's move right on and get into the video. Guizhong was a kind and gentle god, who lived in Liyue a long time ago. While she was incredibly smart, she wasn't very strong, and thus teamed up with the Lord of Geo, Morax. Before meeting him, she had her own people in a civilization located somewhere in Liyue, the true location of which is not known. After they met, they moved their people north of Mount Tianhong and established the Guili Assembly. Guizhong and Morax ruled the Guili Assembly together alongside the Adepti and other gods, such as Mercosius, god of the stove. The people were educated under Guizhong's principles, and were protected by the immense strength of Morax. However, just about 3,700 years ago, this once prosperous city would reach its end. Around this time, the Archon War had begun, and it waged all across Tevat. In Liyue, Guizhong was slain at the Guili Assembly, causing Morax to take his people down south to what is now known as Liyue Harbor. However, something about Guizhong's death always stuck out to me. It's never explicitly stated who or what killed her, and the whole scenario around her death seems very strange. So now, I'd like to go into the secrets she kept, which may unearth her true motives and why she was killed. During the latter part of her life, Guizhong and Morax ruled the Guili Assembly together. However, there was no contract between them, and they each had their own reasons for doing what they did. The only mark of their pledge as it was, was a stone dumbbell, known today as the Catalyst Memory of Dust. Within the dumbbell is all of Guizhong's knowledge. When she was about to die, she asked Morax to forget about it. This makes me think that perhaps some of the knowledge hidden within may have led to Guizhong's death, which I'll get into more in the next section. Another thing that points to Guizhong knowing more than she let on is the fact that she had a domain known as the Realm of Clouds. Why is this suspicious? Well, this realm houses Ruin Guards, machines that were not widely known about in Tevat 3700 years ago, if known about at all. So how did Guizhong get her hands on machines like this? On top of this, Guizhong was definitely a skilled engineer, designing the Guizhong Ballista, which would be used in the fights against Osile and Bice long after her death. This weapon could lock onto enemies and automatically start firing upon them, technology that seems way ahead of its time for 3,700 years ago, even for a god. Adding to this mystery, it is said that she housed other evil artifacts within her realm of clouds. Perhaps these artifacts aren't necessarily evil? but instead go against the wishes of Celestia. We know she had powerful weapons, but perhaps she also had texts that revealed the truth behind Celestia, and other artifacts that, if used correctly, could rival the power of the gods. Perhaps she teamed up with Morax to use him against Celestia. That is what my final section will be about today, why Guizhong had to be killed. In our travels in the underground nation of Onkonomiya, we learn that Orobashi, the god of this area and Watatsumi Island, was sentenced to death by Celestia after reading a book called Before Sun and Moon. This book describes what it was like before the arrival of Fanes and Celestia, and how Tevat transitioned from a world of bishops to a world of humans. I believe Guizhong was somehow able to acquire this information, and knowing how dangerous it was, she kept it for herself. However, the stone dumbbell she gave to Morax contained all of her knowledge, which must have included this. Perhaps she thought he was strong enough to take down Celestia, but when her death came to her, she realized that he may not be. Guizhong also had the knowledge of Conry and Tech, something that would go on to play a part in the fall of that nation. She may have even incorporated this technology into the Guizhong Ballista. 
This amount of power would definitely make her more of a threat than she was before, even if her strength alone as a god wasn't all that powerful. Now, as for her death itself, it is said that a flood came upon the Gwaili Assembly, and it can be presumed that this happened around the time of Guizhong's death as well. Perhaps Celestia sent another god after her when they learned that she knew the truth. This could have been Osile, as Morax had quite the rivalry with him during the Archon War. It's also worth noting how scarcely mentioned Guizhong is throughout the story of Genshin. Perhaps Zhongli and other characters do not want the Traveler asking questions about her, as if they do, they could become an enemy of Celestia and be struck down too, much like Orobashi and Guizhong before them. Anyways, that is all I have for you guys today. Guizhong has always been an interesting character to me, and now I definitely think there's more to her than we could have guessed. It will probably be a while before we learn anything more about her, but in the meantime, we can definitely speculate. I'd love to hear your ideas about Guizhong and her secrets down below as well. Anyways, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have an amazing day, and I will see you all in the next video.